In this uh, video, we're going to go over Form SS-5, which is the Social Security Administration's form for people applying for a Social Security card. So ju just for your information, applying for a Social Security card is free. If anyone uh, tells you that you need to pay a fee for a Social Security card, that should be a big warning sign for you. So you can complete this form yourself. Uh, you can either schedule an appointment at the Social Security Administration office or you can simply um, uh, download a copy of this form from the SSA website. And you would use this form uh, for one of three reasons. Either applying for an original Social Security card, applying for a replacement Social Security card, or to change or update information on your record. So before we get to the form itself, we're going to go over a couple of these um, these items. So uh, to apply for an original Social Security card you must have at least two documents and so uh, this is the one point where you do need to apply in person at the Social Security Administration uh, so that you can uh, show a Social Security Administration employee your documents verifying your age, your identity, US citizenship, or your lawful work authorized immigration status. If you're not a U.S. citizen and you do not have DHS work authorization, you must prove that you have a valid non-work reason for requesting a card. And we'll get to the, some of those uh, uh, examples of um, acceptable documents on page two. But if you're age 12 or older and you've never received a social security number, you must apply in person. Uh, to apply for a replacement Social Security card, uh, you have to have one document that proves your identity. And if you were born outside the United States, you must also provide documents to verify your citizenship or your lawful work authorized status. If you want to update or change information, a name change, correct your date of birth, you must provide documents that show your identity, uh, support the request to change, and establish the reason for your change. For example, updating your correct date of birth, you might need to bring a birth certificate that shows your correct date of birth. A document that supports a name change uh, must be recent and it, it should identify you by, your, by both your old and your new names. So, you're, you're allowed to receive up to three Social Security cards per calendar year or up to 10 in your lifetime. So uh, he, on page two of this form is a list of evidence documents. So depending on what you're trying to update, if you're trying to provide evidence of age, uh, generally you must show your birth certificate or some other document that shows your age. So the Social Security Administration may accept a U.S. hospital record of your birth religious records established before you turn age five that show your age or your date of birth, passport, or an adoption decree that shows the birth information was taken from the original birth certificate. So for identity evidence, uh, you have to have unexpired evidence to verify your legal name, which is what's shown on your social security card. Usually, documents without an expiration date should have been issued within the past two years for adults or within the past four years for children. So examples of proof of identity would be a U.S. driver's license, a U.S. state-issued non-driver identity card. Some states can, get, like a, uh, can give you a, a photo ID that isn't a driver's license, or a U.S. passport. So if you don't have one of those documents, uh, the Social Security Administration may accept other documents that show your name and uh, bio biographical information. This could be a military ID card, certificate of naturalization, an employee ident identity card, a certified copy of your medical record, health insurance card, Medicaid card, or a school ID. If you're not a U.S. citizen, the Social Security Administration must see your current U.S. immigration documents and your foreign passport 
with your updated information or photograph. Uh, you cannot submit a birth certificate, a social security card stub, or your social security record as evidence of your identity. To prove your U.S. citizenship, generally speaking, either a U.S. birth certificate or a U.S. passport, uh, you can provide a consular report of birth. This is for U.S. citizens that are born in a foreign country. Instead of receiving an official birth certificate, you might receive a consular report of birth, a cert certificate of citizenship, or a certificate of naturalization. And then uh, evidence of immigration status. So uh, this would generally be an unexpired document issued by De Department of Homeland Security. It could be a Form I-551, I-94, or I-766. Page 3 contains general instructions on how to complete the application. Uh, use only blue or black uh, ink. Uh, download this on a eight and a half by eleven uh, paper that's kind of the standard printer size uh, and uh, follow these instructions that show uh, you know completely like for example uh, entering your four digit year of birth instead of just a two digit year of birth um, so you don't have to provide your race or ethnicity information doesn't affect any decisions. It is for research and statistical purposes. Um, there are other instructions. You know, if you're applying for on behalf of someone who's under 18, you must show the parent's social security numbers unless the parent was never assigned one. Uh, if the number is not known, uh, you can check the unknown box. Um, indicate an address where you can receive your card within 7 to 14 days. If you're age 18 or older and are physically and mentally capable, you can sign. You must sign an item 18, 17. If you're under 18, you can sign it yourself or your parent slash legal guardian can sign on your behalf. If you're over 18 and you cannot sign on your behalf, a legal guardian, a parent, or a close relative can sign for you. And if you cannot sign your name, you should sign with an X and have two people sign as witnesses in the space beside the mark. Uh, and then there are instructions on how to submit the application. Generally speaking, uh, you should take it to your Social Security office. Uh, you can mail it uh, to your Social Security office. And in that case, any supporting documents that you send to the Social Security Administration will be returned to you. Just keep in mind that uh, the less sensitive information that you have floating around in the U.S. Postal Cert, uh, System, uh, the better off you might be. On page four, there's some information about protecting your Social Security number and, and your, your card. Uh, this is probably one of the most important documents you'll ever have, so please safeguard it. Uh, Privacy Act Statement. Uh, paperwork Reduction Act statement. Uh, depending on your situation, the Social Security Administration estimates that it, it should take no more than an hour uh, to read instructions, gather facts, and answer questions on the application form. For some people, it can take as little as five minutes. So we're going to go over this application. Again, it's a one-page form. It's located on page 5 of 5 of this document uh, on the Social Security uh, Administration website. So in item 1, you're going to complete your first middle, full middle name and then last name. If you have another name that you were given at birth, uh, enter that into the line below. And if you have any other names, aliases, you can enter that as well. Your social security number is previously assigned. We'll go into item two. Uh, and then in item three is your place of birth. Uh, do not abbreviate. So if you were born in Los Angeles, you would enter Los Angeles, not LA. Uh, and then your state or foreign country. In item four, you'll enter your date of birth. 
So two digits for the month, two digits for the day, four digits for the year. Uh, item five, enter your citizenship status. If you are a legal alien not allowed to work, or if you are not one of these other categories, then there are instructions on page three to guide you through this step. Your race and ethnicity questions are not required, uh, but if you choose to answer them, choose the appropriate box. Under sex, uh, enter the appropriate uh, gender box, male or female. And then parents' information. So uh, your mother's name, uh, first name, full middle name, and last name, followed by your mother's social security number. If you do not know that social security number or, or you cannot obtain it, then hit the unknown box. In item 10, you'll do the same thing for your father's uh, information. Line 11 uh, has the person that's listed in item 1 or anyone acting on that person's behalf ever filed for or received a social security number card? Uh, if yes, you have to complete lines 12 and 13. If not, uh, then you should not have to, or if you don't know, then you can go right down to question 14. So if you have uh, previously applied or if someone applied on your behalf, uh, in line 12, you'll enter the name shown on the most recent Social Security card for that person. First name, full middle name, last name. And then if there's a different date of birth used on an earlier application, enter that information here. So what you're trying to do is just make sure that the Social Security information has access to all the information on your behalf so they can process your application correctly. Line 14, you'll enter the date of the application. Line 15 is the daytime phone number where you can best be reached by a representative for questions or clarification. Uh, line 16 is the mailing address, and it should be a mailing address where you can expect uh, to receive your mail within 7 to 14 days. Street address or a post office box followed by your city, uh, state, or the foreign country that you're residing in and then your zip code. Line 17 is your signature, and then line 18 is the relationship. So if you're um, applying on your own behalf, you would check self. If you're applying for someone else, then you would check the appropriate box, depending on your circumstances. And then the field that's below this is uh, for Social Security Administration's use only. So um, that is the end of your application. If you want, we've written a complete article on this topic. Uh, you can simply go to our website, teachmepersonalfinance.com, type in form SS-5 into the search bar, and this article should come up. If you have any questions, please hit us, hit us up on social media, uh, on YouTube, or you can send us an email, and we would be more than happy to assist you as best as we can. If you do like this content, please uh, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel or get onto our email list. And uh, thank you very much.